this man has been very transparent all along. He has a few idee fixes, right? And one of them is this idea that he expressed um, about patriotism being a unifying factor uh, that um, leaves no room for prejudice. And I think one of the most exciting things as somebody who uh, is perceived as a quote unquote person of color is that he gave space that was very liberating to people of color who don't uh, feel in, enslaved by liberal ideology. And I think that a lot of people in the left-wing media could not get their heads around the idea that, that people of, sure. like me yeah. exist. Enslaved by liberal ideology? Well, no, I mean, I, I would disagree with Michelle respectfully about what he did in the speech today, which is to say he began to talk about we're all America as one people, but then he pivoted to describe this America as being everybody who voted for him. And that's a very limited subsection of America, not even a majority of the population. So there's a tension in the speech between the surface level claims that he's speaking to all of America, every American, and uh -huh. his invocation of the people who supported him. Those are not the same thing. We have to recognize the fact that it was a minority of the this population was that supported him. Well, yeah. If you inhabit the ideological safe space of identity politics, and you listen to a man that you disagree with when it comes to basically the fundamental idea that one can embrace American sovereignty and not be xenophobic, racist, or discriminatory, you're going to hear what you want to hear. To the, the fact is, the fact is that there were so many independents that voted for Donald Trump who were black, white, yellow, okay. brown. But we know Hillary won the popular vote. The Democrats didn't get a shout out at all today. All those people who essentially lost the election, this was a time for him to bring them on he, board. He didn't talk just to Republicans. He didn't just talk to conservatives. He did. He Danielle. talked to people who identify themselves as citizens of America. There's so you, way, if you think it's divisive. Danielle, there is a just, way to just, talk about all Americans. You mm -hmm. can talk about America indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And in fact, he does invoke the concept of America. Patriotism is a good thing. Democrats get behind that as well. But he didn't. He pivoted. Not all of them. He yeah. pivoted. He pivoted and he talked about those people who had supported him. He did not reach out and open up the fold no. to everybody. Let's, let's just talk and about a policy Provocatively, level. provocatively, yes. invoked the slogan "American First." Yes. We, we all know that he's trying to revalorize that slogan. You're looking you delighted by you that. You would endorse yes, that. I, Go I, on. I find but he's that doing to be a trend. No. He's no, doing it to provoke. It is a transcendent idea that yes, all Americans should put American America's first. Americans first. And the, the problem with the progressive left is they do not accept the idea that America is exceptional. To the contrary, I wrote an article today about America indivisible. This is a special place and it's a special place because we're indivisible. He's a cunning rhetorician. When he invokes the slogan like American first, what he's doing well, is simultaneously you know stirring up his base, for example yourself, and also provoking his adversaries if you so think that they'll it's overreact. Stirring, if you, so they'll you think overreact. it's stirring up the base to talk about the idea of law and order, to talk about sovereignty, that to talk phrase, about putting America that phrase, first as you well know, trade was used deals. in the 1930s as a kind of American isolationism in the face of well, Nazi Germany. Well, you accept that but as See, rhetoric well, that your president is now using? So you're calling him a Nazi because he no, harkens... No, I'm not. She did yes, not. you are. She because, did not. No, you, because you can, you, there, there is this bitter clinging to the idea that since people in the 1930s used it, that using that phrase now in 2017 so it's time to, to reclaim it, establish American so exceptionalism. He is, he is claiming to reclaim it, but that's what makes him a cunning rhetorician because he knows the history is there, so he knows he will simultaneously well, pull his base together with that phrase and provoke his adversaries. And when he provokes his adversaries, they will overreact, and then he will use that overreaction I, to delegitimate them. I think, so people should recognize what a that, cunning rhetorician yes, he is. Yes. Can I just ask you to step back from this for one second? He has been called a bad winner. He has the victory. He has the presidency uh -huh. now. Yeah. Wasn't this a time to talk about no, unity? Why don't you hold Chuck Schumer to that same standard? No, because no, he was a it. sore loser on the stand who took <laughs> nasty, passive aggressive barbs. Roy right, Faye, if you're going to preach healing, Dania. practice Roy it. Roy Blount was terrific. I will give Roy Blount credit today for having expressed a message of unity and reached out to people on both sides of the aisle. He did a masterful job chairing the ceremony. Hats off to him. He set a model. I wish other people had also followed it. Thank you, know you both very much. I wish more of these Democrats would have condemned all of the criminal behavior and anarchy on the streets because they can't tolerate that they lost. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you, you. Emily.